the activation of naive T cells that respect the dendritic cell interaction. T cells are a component of the blood that helps in the fight against infection. T cells start as stem cells in the bone marrow, which can develop into any type of white blood cell. The stem cells that migrate into the thymus differentiate into naive T cells. They then circulate in the bloodstream, scanning for antigen presenting cells containing foreign entities. They are a major part of the adaptive immune response system and play a key role in immunity. They only come into effect when the innate system fails to kill the pathogen. Entering the secondary lymphoid tissue. Activation occurs when the naive T cell has entered the secondary lymphoid tissue. Interaction between the CD62L molecule on the T cell and the peripheral node of Dresden on the high endothelial venule brings the T cell to the endothelium. The T cell then appears to roll across the endothelium. During this rolling, a molecule on the naive T cell, CCR7, is stimulated by stationary homeostatic chemokines on the HEV. These are CCL19 and CCL21. This interaction causes conformational change in the LFA1, a leukocyte integrin on the naive T cell, which increases its affinity for its ligand on the APC. These interactions enable migration of the naive T cell across the endothelium into the lymph node to come into contact with APC dendritic cell. Dendritic cells. Dendritic cells are a form of antigen presenting cells in the lymph node along with macrophages and B cells. They are present at the epithelial barrier and are the strongest activators of naive T cells. Immature dendritic cells are very efficient at ingesting pathogens. Maturation and migration occur with the dendritic cell ending in the lymph node. Dendritic cells have the ability to express major histocompatibility complexes, MHC1 and MHC2, which are cell surface proteins which interact with T cell receptors on the naive T cell. These are created in the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus within the dendritic cell. The MHC form depends on the antigen detected. Interaction between the naive T cell and the antigen presenting cell. The surface molecules present on the naive T cell and dendritic cell necessary for these interactions combine to each other with low affinity to detect antigens present. This is known as transient binding. These bonds can be easily broken if the specific antigen for the naive T cell is not detected, allowing the T cell to move on to other antigen presenting cells for detection. There are two necessary interactions between naive T cells and dendritic cells that must occur for the naive T cell to become activated. These are T cell receptor peptide MHC interactions and go stimulatory signaling. TC or peptide MHC. T cell receptor complexes interact with MHC along with the simultaneous binding by a specific co-receptor. These co-receptors are specific to MHC class 1 and MHC class 2. CD8 is specific to class 1 and will proceed with the activation of cytotoxic T cells. CD4 is specific to class 2 and will proceed with the activation of helper T cells. These interactions lead to the production of NF kappa B and AP1 within the naive T cell. These transcription factors along with NF AT will go on to be activated by the second necessary interaction, cosimatory signaling. Cosimatory signaling. This is required for the complete activation of the T cell. The previous interaction increases the affinity of cosimatory molecules. These are CD28, a surface cell protein present on the naive T cell, and B7, a periphery membrane protein found on the dendritic cell. CD28 interacts with B7, which activates the transcription factors that lead to the synthesis of IL-2, as well as the formation of IL-2 receptors on the surface of the naive T cell. This leads to the secretion of IL-2, which will proceed to interact with the receptors on the naive T cell. This induces differentiation of the naive T cell into either cytotoxic or helper T cell, as well as the proliferation of these cells. Lymphocytes stimulated by antigen receptors alone will fail to produce cytokines, are unable to sustain proliferation, and will often undergo apoptosis or become unresponsive to further stimulation. Selection and apoptosis. There are two types of selection for naive T cells in the thymus once they become activated. The first is positive, whereby T cells that have an ability to bind to an MSG complex will be kept alive and will be able to further differentiate into functioning T cells. Those that cannot survive will be killed by an apoptotic signal in order to prevent non-functioning T cells from entering the bloodstream. The second is negative, whereby T cells that have too high an affinity for binding to self antigen complexes are destroyed. This aids in the prevention of autoimmune diseases which are caused by non-functional antibodies, or T cells. Without this method of prevention, unnecessary inflammation and damage to organs and tissues would occur. In general, 98% of T cells undergo apoptosis in the thymus due to failure of either positive or negative selection. 2% of the T cells survive and have to leave the thymus to become fully matured into functioning T cells. The surviving 2% of cells will become either CD8 T cells or CD4 T cells. 
cytotoxic T cells main function is to recognize and kill viral infected cells. Helper T cells main function is to produce cytokines which activate the adaptive immune response.